You're making your way through some dense forest. You have not seen the sun for several days. As you make way through this dark, damp, moss-covered undergrowth. And suddenly your progress stops as you hear a deafening NICK! While answered by another NICK! From some other direction. And then you hear it crashing through the undergrowth. Come two monstrous forms. Two terrible things approach. They are huge. They stand five feet at, at the shoulder. They are quadrupedal, massive, feathered, be beaked things. And they are angry and they want to rip you apart. You have encountered two owlbears and you are their prey. You might want to roll this shit right about now because they're going to be on you next round. <laughs> and they're going to rip into you with their claws and their beaks. And if you're fighting one of the early editions, then they might be able to get a hug on you. <laughs> and that's not, that's no laughing matter. A hug attack is when they hit with both, <laughs> both claws and then they do extra damage because they are grappled you and they are squeezing your fairy life out of you. Owlbears are nasty. They were nasty in first edition, and they're still nasty in fifth edition. They're just big, angry, ill-tempered creatures. Think of something with the size and power of a large bear. Yeah, and that's about it, really. They're, they're bears, but they're angry bears, and they're angry bird bears, because apparently the crazed Dr. Moreau type wizard who created the first owlbear fought Bear, how can I make bear more dangerous? And being an insane wizard, he thought, I know, I'll make it. Bring it with an owl, a giant bird of prey. Thus, the owl bear was formed. Now, <laughs> all that aside, owl bears are very typical D and D monsters. They are almost the quintessential D and D beast. They're strange, they're weird, they're goofy. They're probably based off some little plastic miniature that Gary and co got from Korea or wherever it is. They got those little weird plastic miniatures of owlbears and zorns and pine players and all the other strangenesses that they didn't decide to give stats to. But it is, over the years, been that most D&D &D monsters. It looks strange, it looks odd, and... Yeah, it's just weird. It's one of those things, a weird monster of D&D. That's what an owlbear is. But if you want to put them in your game, you got to give them at least some ecology, some motive for being there beyond, well, they're on their account table, and I guess it says owlbear, so it's owlbears today. <laughs> and what do you use them for? Well, there's some, there's some lore and some myths and some uh, that fluffy rubbish in there. And they seem to be now be part of the Feywilds, just further showing how elves are dicks. Because apparently, in the, if you read through, through the D&D 5 Monster Manual, one of the overarching themes is elves are dicks. <laughs> how they got their cow to good destination is beyond me. So they are creatures of the Fey. They are the Seely and the Unseely. They are their hunting beasts. And in other places, elves use them as pets. People raise owlbears. People find owlbears useful as dangerous, feral, killy things. Well, Pop goblins use them as war beasts. And people use them. So you, they get around and they're scary and they're large. But you've got to add things to the owlbear. The owlbear obviously has a fear attack. You've got to put a fear attack in there. Because there's nothing more scary than something which is five feet at the shoulder. Rearing up on its hind legs and looking like it's going to about splat you with just one claw. And it gets two claws and a bite. So it's probably going to swat you and then bite your head clean off. That's bound to get you into the frightened condition if you don't make your wisdom saving throw. So consider putting that in for your owlbear. Other things, owlbears often come as minions. People somehow, I'm using the word people loosely include elves and hobgoblins and trolls and giants and whatnot use our bears as pets as guardians as war beasts no one in my games player party were quite terrified to find out that the elves 
had owlbear war beasts, their hunting creatures, as their guardian creatures to keep whatever they were guarding, and that to keep them coming up from the dungeons. They had owlbears to eat whatever would come up and get it and try and get them. So owlbears are employable. They have, if you see an owlbear, there's often the master creature somewhere around. Something intelligent is guiding them. Or you run into into the area of the actual wizard, the progenitor of the owlbears. If you're going through some dark forest and you know there's a wizard in there, consider having that wizard be the owlbear progenitor. There are only 18 owlbears in the world and they're the ones he's made or she's made or if it's no, it's made. So there's been a few thoughts on owlbears, that most D&D &D monsters, that crazy Dr. Maru cro cocaine wizard mashup monster. Thank you. Was right.